Welcome to Worship Quest Wednesdays, a series addressing topics related to worship, spiritual formation, and theology. Our topic for today's episode is worship and missions. So let me introduce you to our guests. Rob Still is a worship leader, songwriter, producer, instructor, and coach based in Nashville, Tennessee. He has a master's degree in worship studies from the Robert E. Weber Institute for Worship Studies, and he is currently completing his doctoral dissertation from IWS as well. Rob has taught on the mission field in over 20 nations and served as director of worship for the Soso International Music and Arts Festival in Eastern Europe, instructor of practical theology of worship at Scuola de Incanari, which is School of Worship in Romania, and as guest lecturer at the Ukrainian Evangelical Theological Seminary in Kyiv, Ukraine. Rob has also served as worship pastor for several churches in the Nashville area. And before entering vocational ministry, Rob worked for over 25 years as, as an award-winning producer for Still Music Group, one of Nashville's leading advertising music companies, composing jingles and post scores for hundreds of brands, including Walmart, Nike, Cracker Barrel, Pizza Hut, and many others. He like is the composer, Barrel. Cracker Barrel. <laughs> he is the composer of over 90 songs on CCLI, including a new anointing, This is the Day, which is particularly well known in Hungary and Romania. His songs have been featured in Worship Leader Magazine and published by worshiptogether.com or Capital Christian Music Group. He is also the author of the devotional book, Resurrection Power, 50 Days That Rock the World, and Worship Actions and Attitudes, Understanding 10 Hebrew Words for Worship. Rob, so glad you're here. Thanks for being here. Well, that's quite an introduction. Thanks, brother. I appreciate that. <laughs> Who wrote that? Anyone? Anyway. Yeah. It's all true. See, I know it's true, but I'm beginning to think, gosh, I didn't put enough in mine. <laughs> well, and, and this More is filler. <laughs> and this is Fred. Okay. Hi. So, <laughs> I had this large target on my back, and they're both used to hitting it quite often. Uh, uh, Until we get along, we've worked together. Uh, oy, 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 oy. Uh, so Fred Human's <laughs> ministry life has revolved around music and worship and evangelism, and has taken him to 50 nations sharing Christ, leading and teaching on worship, and developing resources for the church. From working in the local church to publishing uh, resources to leadership in parachurch ministry, Fred has four decades of diverse experience and a deep understanding of the theological and practical aspects of corporate worship. He directs Music Works International and has taught at the Ukrainian Evangelical Theological Seminary in Kyiv since 2012 along with creating and leading the National Music and Worship Conference there for seven years. He has helped program and lead national, international, and multinational conferences in the U.S., U.K., Latin America, Amsterdam, Manila, Nairobi, Seoul, and Kyiv, Ukraine. He has the Advanced Graduate Certificate and Master's Degree from the Robert E. Weber Institute for Worship Studies. Close and is an ordained minister with the Missionary Church USA. He recently founded the Relief Fund Serve Ukraine, dedicated to support Ukrainians in this horrific time of need uh, during the war, as well as uh, moving forward uh, from yeah. here beyond. Yeah, 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 yeah. Welcome, Fred. I'm glad you're here. Oh, good to be here. And I love the fact that this is a great team of people that's worked together before as well. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Well, during our time together today, we will be discussing worship and missions. So let's just jump right in. Uh, let's talk about the relationship between worship and missions. Sometimes we may separate those two and think, okay, worship is this over here, missions is this over here, and maybe the two never really meet. But is there some sort of theological framework for understanding the connection, the relationship between worship and mission? What would you say? 
Go for it, Rob. Well, yeah, I would begin just by thinking of the whole grand narrative of God's story and that the connection between worship and mission really originates in God's story of creation and the fall and then God's work of redemption and then uh, remaking us um, through Jesus Christ in as new creations, right? So in Genesis 3, we see the story of God's, uh, of, of the estrangement of human beings from relationship with God, right? And then in Genesis 12, we see the estrangement of the entire human race, not only from God, but from one another at the story of the Tower of Babel, right? And so part of the mission of God is like um, bringing back together this connection between God and man and man to man, undoing both the fall from the Garden of Eden and also undoing um, the damage done at the Tower of Babel, right? So this idea of uh, missions, I guess I see three kind of core scriptures that help like give me a theological framework for thinking of this. So the first I see is like, I, we see in Isaiah 2 and in Isaiah 66, we see basically all the nations, every ethnic group is gathered together in worship, right? They're coming to the temple to worship God. And then in Acts uh, chapter 2, the story of Pentecost, we see that there are representatives of every nation gathered together. When God pours out the Holy Spirit, right, we see that there's this ability to communicate in other languages and for other languages to be understood by the presence of God's Holy Spirit, right? And then, of course, the one all of us worship dudes will know, which is, you know, in Revelation 5, 9, we see that every nation, every tribe, every language, uh, you know, every ethnic, ethnic group is gathered together in worship, you know, in before God's throne. So one of the primary principles we see here, I think, is that God's image is best represented by this diverse, you know, multiplicity of different expressions of, you know, what it means to be you know, a human being. So for me, that's kind of a theological and sociological framework to, yeah, yeah, yeah. to connect yeah, worship good. and mission. I yeah. mean, I think it comes back to, I mean, we've all, those of us who do this on a regular basis, come back to quoting John Piper, where he said, mm -hmm. the goal of missions is worship, mm -hmm. that it's about raising up worshipers uh, for God. And that framework has been a, a strong motivator for me, or that was a great explanation of how I was motivated mm -hmm. in terms of the international stuff that I've done. And I think, Rob, we both benefited from some discussion of this in our past church, where mm -hmm. the image of worship going on in heaven being diverse mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we have a faulty picture that worship in heaven is about white robes with gold halos and, and great harp chops you know <laughs> we're all gonna we're all gonna learn how to play harps and only the little ones because the big ones would be too ostentatious yeah. you know it's <laughs> so we have this picture that the music is going to be like what we like but we have a hint that the the massive cultures are it, represented by every nation, tribe, tongue, language, it's how do you tell? How are you going to tell? If everybody's white and wearing white clothes, how are you going to appreciate and understand the diversity? How did John get that picture? He had to have seen some distinguishing marks and some even some distinguishing sounds. I love a picture uh, that I quote often where there's worship going on in heaven and it's incredibly varied, incredibly stylistic over the years. And I'm thinking of what does Chris Tomlin have to say to, to Mozart? Mm -hmm. What does Handel have to say to Martin Smith and Delirious? Right. Um, but there's that, there's diversity in the age, there's diversity in the culture. All this stuff is going on and the Lord raises his hand and it all goes... Phew, and God says, where are my Uyghurs? Mm -hmm. That tribe uh, in China that's being so put upon by the government there. Where are my Uyghurs? I need to hear some Uyghur. And they come together in the midst of all what we would call high production, high value worship music. And with a, with a couple of simple instruments, they sing something in their language and everybody weeps. And I'm going to weep now just thinking about it. Yeah. That God loves diversity. I mean, look at us. First of all, that's the big joke, right? But you look at the world, the God who's concerned about the deep sea fish 
that he creates and molds that nobody really ever sees, or the snail darter, or the hummingbird, or the just the sheen on the wing of another bird, or the way the whole thing works together. How could worship in heaven be anything but diverse? And so our job is to bring to God the worship due his name. And mm -hmm. it is primarily for me, multicultural. It, it, it ain't just our favorite tunes. I mean, as much as it's, I mean, I appreciate CCLI and what it's done for the church. So I'm not slamming them, but it's not just about the top 100 songs and high production sure. or songs in English. Right. Oh, there, I've, I've said it, haven't I? I put the cat amongst the pigeons. I mean, that's, we think that it, that's what worship is. We've created it. We turned it into a style rather than saying this is the the heart cry of the world responding to the revelation of God. I mean, it really is revelation and response. Yeah. And how would how would somebody who's from the mm -hmm. Uyghur culture respond? They're not going to learn Matt Redman. Mm -hmm. As lovely as that is, I, and as wonderful as those songs are, they're going to sing out of their hearts, out of their heart uh, music, their heart language. So mm -hmm. that's why mission really is about raising up worshipers. I think it's important to make a distinction, and I know you didn't say this intentionally, between of missions and mission. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, because mm -hmm. mission, we have a certain mindset about what missions is, yep. and you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But mission is really the focus. We're being sent. I mean, that is what the end of worship should be, right? The fourth fold, as it were, go. It's like, don't mm -hmm. just sit there. I um, mean, I'll say this, and then uh, I'll let you let you go back at it. I, I was especially touched years ago when pastor that we both sat under talked about how important or how worship changes us. And for me, I put it this way, that sometimes people think worship is all about getting your jollies and having a good old time. And often the phrase is used, you're so heavenly minded, you're no earthly good. And I maintain Guilty. it's impossible. It is impossible to do that. Because if you're focusing on heaven, heaven being the place where God is, if you're focusing on God and you're worshiping and connecting to him, you will have God's heart for the nations, for the displaced, for the refugee, for the poor. We cannot engage with God without receiving that. So that going is essential to our worship. Yeah. That's right. Well, the church, the body of Christ, I believe, has two basic purposes for its existence, worship and witness right? Some mm -hmm. people say those are the bookends, right? And then we have you know, all the stuff that connects those two things together. Um, it's interesting to note that oftentimes God calls his people to the work of ministry and witness in the midst of worship. Mm -hmm. you know, I think of like Paul and Barnabas in yeah. Acts 13, yeah. right? They, it's, scripture says that they were set apart for the work of the Lord, and it was in the midst of their worship that it happened. They were instructed to go out and reach peoples and regions beyond as they were worshiping together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's also striking to consider that Jesus's last command here on earth to his disciples took place within the context of worship. Because yeah. Jesus asked his disciples to meet on the mountain in Galilee. And the custom of that day would have implied to the disciples that they were going there to worship. You went uh, when when they, you talked about going up onto the mountain, that was the place of worship. Um, yeah. The famous worship passage, John four, right? That's what the woman at the well yeah, says, yeah, yeah. right? That you know, um, spoke of worshiping on the mountain rather than in Jerusalem, right? Yeah, 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 and so Matthew yeah. twenty eight tells us that when they saw Jesus, they worshipped him. And what does Jesus say as the disciples were worshiping? Go. Go into the world, make disciples of all nations, of all peoples everywhere. That that famous command, the Great Commission, you know, uh, to go out. Yeah. So these things are happening in the midst of worship, worship yeah. and witness, or worship and mission, or missions as we yeah. go out and form these teams to go out or whatever yeah. we do. Um, they go hand in hand. Yeah. They're really right. interconnected. You mentioned it, I'm not sure you mentioned earlier in a previous discussion, Rob, about the Missio Dei, the mission of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we are about that. It, mm -hmm. I'm thinking of uh, the Mount of Trans, speaking of being on the mountain, the Mount of Transfiguration. It's like you're seeing this unbelievable vision of God and those who have gone before, and their, their tendency said, 
I'd like to stay here for a long time. Can mm-hmm. we just build houses and live in this? And Jesus says, go, no. You can't live in that. You need, I think we need those experiences. That's where God calls yeah. us. That's where God speaks to us. And, and we need that kind of encounter. But woe unto us if we're just there about us. Mm. If, we don't, if we don't heed the thing to say, you know, you can't live in this forever. You've got to go. This is the way of emp- calling and empowering you for the yeah. mission that's ahead. Yeah. Hence the command, you know, if you think of, you know, the dialogical nature of worship as, you know, revelation and response. And so one of the ways we're clearly instructed to respond is to be willing to go. Hmm. Right. That's one of our responses of worship is, is, is uh, saying yes to Jesus's command (laughs) to go and make disciples. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. So we all go on short term missions and take our guitars and sing our songs and then go home. Right. Well, let's unpack that. Let's talk about. <laughs> I'm trying to set you up, trying to set up your segues for you. Not taking the bait. <laughs> Cross cultural principles for yeah. the local church, right? Our church's worship. Um, you know, Fred, you and I have talked about the fact of needing to exegete the culture of a congregation. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So unpack that a little bit. Like, what does what does that look like? You know, are we talking? about joining a short-term missions trip and going for two weeks and then just, you know, having, you know, having a good time and a good experience. And maybe the Lord does something that's great. Or are we talking about something beyond that? I I think it's beyond that. Certainly the going is important, but oftentimes the going is just punching our card. Mm -hmm. And, and to be Mm -hmm. honest, and, and this is where my cynicism comes up. It's like, (laughs) oh yeah, we're going to, we're going to fill in the blank. We're going to Argentina love Argentina, bless you, Argentina. Um, and we need some music. Who are we going to get? Yeah, Rob plays. Yeah, and he can kind of do some different things and he doesn't have to, he can pick a song for the moment, so we're good. And so you're just accompaniment to the real work, you know? Mm. Or it's like, or you're just kind of the extra guy. What's the musician going to do? Well, he can't use his guitar to lay bricks, so he might as well have him sing. Uh, so the challenge is moving from that idea to, to saying, when we're worshiping, what can we do to engage our people? What does it take to engage them? Because oftentimes we think about that going overseas when we're in another culture, another language, uh, an unusual situation where we've never been before, different sleeping, accommodation, different food. We're aware that it's different. But when we're, we're going out to our suburban congregation, or even our urban congregation, just into our congregation with people that we know and a culture that we think we know, or we just go in with our set stuff. Here's my 10 songs. Here's the songs that I know hit the top 10 in TCLI, so people will know them. They're good. Uh, you know, it. Uh, our band can do them well. Uh, we can have a lot of smoke, and it'll look really spiritual, and it kind of will come down, uh, et cetera, et cetera but we don't really engage our congregations and we're engaged. We need to engage them at multiple levels. I mean, I, I laugh because I'm trying to want to share this for a long time. So forgive, I don't want to unpack it all, but I went from being a guy who was on the road all the time doing evangelistic work in schools. Uh, and that's within the British Commonwealth. So England, uh, Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, but also in Western Europe. And I was trying to pick songs that would engage the students, maybe songs they knew or in a style that they knew or something that would bring the message. And it was all focused on them so that they would engage. And to some extent, we need to be aware of what our people are used to, but we also Mm -hmm. need to be the bearer of the greater kingdom of God. Uh, For me now, it's not just finding the hippest, latest thing. And do they like country? Do they like uh, acid, I'm um, acid rock that shows I'm old. Do they like hard edge <laughs> rock? What, what do they like, you know, soul, R and B, whatever gospel, or what do they need to experience of the kingdom of God? So I came up with this little mnemonic that helps me eras, nations, generations, yeah, yeah. styles, streams, and congregation. So what that means is as a worship leader, focusing on exegeting our congregation, first of all, we need to build a culture for them as well. Mm. So understanding who they are, where they come from, building a bridge to those six things. So eras, the history of the church, Mm. and not just the history of your church, but the church as a whole. You know, we've all 
been educated in the idea of ancient future, and I think that's an excellent way to put it. What's happened throughout the church? What are some things that link us to eras gone past? Nations, what about songs from other countries? Guess what? God doesn't only speak English, and he doesn't only gift writers in the West to write songs that express the heart of worship. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's teaching songs in other languages. I love the fact that when Rob and I have been together at church in the past, we would to sing songs in Spanish without translating them. Mm -hmm. We're like, well, what does this mean? Well, look it up. <laughs> <laughs> Figure it out. You can do that. Mm -hmm. So nations, generations. So within the church and the existing uh, body of people, you've got people who were raised. I mean, you've got 80-year-old Elvis fans out there. You've got, in, in terms of church music, you've got people who went through the Jesus movement. you got other people who are uh, Bethlehem Jesus Culture Hill Song Elevation all the time. Other people who are all about modern hymns uh, and lots of stylistic things. But generationally, there's experiences that are linked to that music. When I hear in moments like these, I remember where I was when I first heard that. Sure. So that's the generations. Styles, I think I already mentioned styles there, but musically, it's not just what I prefer, you all know my thing for my students is it's not about you. And we think I can choose my styles and that's what people will like. That's wrong. Streams means what's coming from other denominations, other unions, other parts of the body of Christ that can bring a, an awareness that it's not just about us. And then congregation, what things are being birthed in our congregation? Yes, songs, but maybe putting somebody up there who in any other church wouldn't be accepted because they wouldn't understand the history of that person. But when they stand up there and sing, how great thou art, you know the cancer that she's been through. You know the struggle with her child. You know the difficulties in the community. So you've got eras, nations, generations, styles, streams, and congregations. To me, congregation, to me, that's a different way of how do we exige, we exegete the congregation, and this is where we take them to. Maybe I went in another direction where you were headed, but to me, that's very much related because it can't just be about what they like. Right. Mm -hmm. Sorry, you got me preaching. Well, just to kind of follow up on that, um, I, I think of how can we, I saw, I, I like a, you were asking for principles, right? Cross-cultural principles. And so one principle I, I think of is to try to um, see what is right there in front of you in your congregation that is representative yeah. of God's diversity, right? Yeah, so, yeah. so, you know, just try to recognize the diversity that's right there in your community, if you have any diversity, and that's most right. churches do, you know, at some level, have some degree of, of uh, people that are not from, you know, all the same culture. Um, and then uh, I would say, you know, so in our in my role as the worship pastor of worship and arts for example i would try to be inclusive right so if i i would try to include different people from the different cultural representations there and if they're part of my worship team for example you know maybe like fred was hinting at maybe we do a chorus or a song in spanish in fact i just just did that this past weekend you know mm -hmm. Um, where, speaking of exegeting, Fred, I put the English and the Spanish up there because I was well, teaching it to them. Well, you can, you can, but, but, yeah. but then later to just sing the Spanish, it makes them realize what everybody else feels like when they come into our situation and have to learn English. You know? Yeah, yeah, being, well, being, that's, being that's very true. Kind of that's dig, that's dig very true it. as a, yeah. yeah. But but basically, just having uh, an attitude, I guess, of trying to be inclusive, right, and trying to honor those who are right there with you in some way, even if it's like small, small ways. So, you know, and depending on what the particular liturgical approach of your church is, but like I was at one church where we, you know, would have special music, right? So like I had a girl, she was from Bulgaria, we had her sing a song in Bulgarian. Mm -hmm. You know, and so you have a share a special moment. So we're seeing, you know, it's a sample. You know, I'm not trying to get the entire congregation to sing, you know, in that language. Um, another thing you can do, just super practical, like uh, have someone pray in their own language. You know, so and don't we translate. That event. Yeah, not, they don't have to translate it is exactly right. So we're praying for Ukraine. We're praying for Ukraine. There's a lot of people from Ukraine, you know, so where they're praying in Russian or Ukraine, you know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I mean, there's some there's some simple like practical ideas, I guess, to yeah, try sure. to um, 
uh, and, and it develops some cross cultural principles. Yeah, good. You can discover that just by looking at the congregation mm -hmm. or getting to yeah. know people. I mean, uh, you know, it's uh, this uh, branches into all kinds of other things. But if you don't know your people, you don't need to be up front leading them. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, it's not just because of your musical gifting and the fact that you can play a guitar well that should put you up there. Or you can sing well. It's like there is a pastoral formational role Absolutely. that this all plays. So you are not only it, uh, uncovering it, you are stimulating them to go by understanding who they are, getting to know them yeah. and helping craft experiences, craft services that will challenge them to go uh, and do. Yeah. And really what we're talking about here is contextualization, yep. yeah. right? Uh, which just means framing the gospel message in language and communication forms that are appropriate and meaningful to the local culture. Yeah, and um, that's, the, that's, that's what I should have covered. I mean, that applies to the yeah, question. No. Yeah, no, you did. Yeah. Contextualizing Absolutely. it in your congregation. Right, so. and this doesn't have to just be when you go on a missions trip to You're another right. country, you need to be looking at your congregation and contextualizing uh, that situation, the worship time that you're gathering, the gathering of the people there, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And again, I think it applies that when you contextualize and when you bring out uh, the things that are in your context, then people are listening and aware of who God is right. and they're listening to his call. Uh, mm -hmm. They're realizing that, mm -hmm. gosh, I didn't, I've never heard anybody sing how great thou art in Portuguese before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you realize as it's, it's hard for me because my whole ministry has been al almost all international. Mm -hmm. And so when I realize some these, these experiences will say, I didn't know God spoke Portuguese. I'm going, Hi, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay, okay, fine. I'll back off. I understand. I've had that experience many times. Um, and when you, and the, even to challenge them when they're listening to a language they haven't heard, listen for words that may be similar. Not every language has cognates, but most of the languages that we've all worked in, there are quite a few. And all of a sudden, just a, an English word that was transliterated pops in there. You go, oh, I recognize that. Rather than going, I don't understand a word you're saying. Why are we doing this? Right, but right, to engage with yeah. that culture. But listen, we are so spoiled in North America. Okay, we, sorry, we are so spoiled in the US. Mm. The Canadians are at least are, you know, apologetic. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Johnny, Johnny Mark and my friend. Give me a hard time. Oh, gosh. But yeah, the point is, we think the world revolves around us. And the idea of worship music and how much uh, contemporary English language or Western worship music has taken over the evangelical church anyway, worldwide, mm. makes us think that we can just do what we want. Mm. We need to understand that God speaks to people in their language, mm -hmm. not just in ours. Right. Okay. Hobby horse. Yep. Done. Yeah. yeah. Well, your rant aside, um, I really, I really liked, I really, I really resonated um, with what you were saying about eras and nations and generations and streams, congregations. Like to me as a leader, I'm thinking that it all starts with the vision right? And having an awareness of what to look for. So I think you give us some really great targets, you know, to aim for some great, those are some great aspirations to have. And a lot of times we don't, Jesus said, forgive them for they know not. We don't do these things because we haven't thought about it, you know? Yeah. So yeah. I, I really appreciate how you frame that, Fred. Well, it's a part of the pilgrimage for me because I was all about picking the right song for the right people, you know, and worship, we confuse worship and evangelism all the time in the West. And, and in the countries that we have impacted the most, right. where it, it's not about that. Evangelism can happen as a result of worship. Worship should, is not a tool for evangelism. Right. It's, it's about God. Yeah. And God's another even podcast. In Corinthians, even yeah. in Corinthians, he did, they, did, they had not planned a seeker service. No, he walked into active, passionate, engaging worship, and he thought, God's here. Mm -hmm. He just happened to walk in. But that is a good point. And uh, Rob, I like your joke. That's another podcast. We could yeah. talk for an hour just on the it's purpose always of the podcast. gathering. Yeah, yeah. Right. It's always another podcast. Um, but uh, that's a good point to think through. Mm -hmm. um, 
worship and missions or witness worship and witness if we want to say mm-hmm. um it's not that you have to choose one or the other and it's not that you worship in order to win people to the mm-hmm. lord right. uh, we see in scripture it's very clear that we worship god for who he is yes we praise God for all that he has done. Mm-hmm. And as a result of that, people see the church's worship and they are right. drawn to God. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. So let's unpack that a little bit there, because that does touch a little bit on the purpose of the gathering. Mm-hmm. Um, but as we're talking about, you know, this specific topic about worship and mission, um, how do we make sure that we're not using worship as a gimmick for witnessing. Well, start with spirit and truth, right? Mm-hmm. So if the if we're if we're gathered to worship in any context and spirit and and in spirit and truth is our bullseye and that's our target, well then, you know, by faith we believe that, you know, God is going to be revealed in a in a meaningful way to whoever whoever is there because it's the Holy Spirit it does all the heavy lifting, you know, in any in any worship gathering, whatever, you know, whatever your context is, right? So if you start mm-hmm. with spirit and in truth, then, you know, then it's the Holy Spirit who touches the hearts of those who are looking on and going, what are those guys doing? And I don't know what it is, but I sense something, mm-hmm. you yeah. know, yeah, yeah, and yeah. I think that's the that's kind of the beginning place anyway, is just, you know, um, uh, expecting holy spirit to do what only holy spirit can do and 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 not getting in the way of that but but um also i guess providing the ways and means you know that 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 people can experience the presence of god taste and see and know that he is that he is good by what we say and what we do i think it starts to a step before that in that you have to establish in your church situation what the purpose of worship is because frankly, worship for so many equals marketing. We need just the right person, just the right song, just the right style. Now, I don't know that anybody's wearing skinny jeans anymore. Certainly I have never worn them, nor will I ever be able to. Um, but a certain look, because I don't even have the, I don't have the hair for skinny jeans either. Um, it's, it's, it's all about marketing. What are you saying about Rob? Well, yeah, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm a dinosaur, man. What are you talking yeah, but, about? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you got the hair, man. Yeah, he, well, he's got it up front. Anyway. I have some hair. <laughs> Don't look behind, man. Yeah, that's exact. <laughs> Follow him, and then you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, anyway, so when you when you bring up the idea of the of the work of the Holy Spirit, think about the Day of Pentecost. What does it say? It says, "What were they saying?" It, were, it was languages that the people there recognized, and they were speaking, who? Of the wonders of God. Yeah, the glories of God. It was yeah. worship. Yeah. God is this. God has done that. And how many got saved that day? Mm-hmm. So if you're lift, I mean, again. 3,000. Yeah, and, and plus. Yeah, so thank you for, for correcting my biblical ignorance. Um, <laughs> or my, my brief moment of... of oldness the, with that 3000 you know they heard it in a way they understood but all that the, the disciples had to do was follow what god was doing yeah and it i mean as much as as somebody who has done schools evangelism for seven years and a friend of a million students live that takes a whole lot of burden off of you because i was struggling every day to figure out what was going to be the right thing to say yeah i prayed yeah, we put together a good program. Yeah, we engaged with people. But to think that if we're just declaring the greatness of God, he can do something, holy moly. That happened once at Spring Harvest, the the largest Christian event in Europe. I was leading worship in the youth venue, and I forget who was coming up to speak. It might even have been Tony Campolo. But we, with our team, were leading worship. And at the end of that leading musical worship, let's be let's be accurate here, Um, leading musical worship and it was obvious the holy spirit was doing something so they turned the meeting around they said you know what god's been speaking to some of you Mm. and i think it's time for you to finally come to know the god we've been singing about and half the congregation came to christ wow 
and cry and they moved there was no place to put them they had to move them to half the auditorium and you couldn't hear the rest of what was going on because of all the counseling that was going on and the prayer and the weeping so it, that really is the point is is the goal to do it in your strength and your wisdom hey god gives wisdom I'm not complaining about that but woe unto us if we think it's our wisdom that does it sure but if we can follow god uh and seek to ex, uh, extol the wonders of the God who brought us out of darkness into his marvelous light. He will do that. He, I've seen it and I want to see it more. Uh, yeah. There you go. Uh, that was incredible. I think it was Tony Campolo was coming up to speak afterwards and nobody could hear Campolo. They weren't listening. They, they were too busy weeping, but yeah. I think he felt okay about that probably yeah i think he did yeah. i think he did but that's those kind of things are pretty unusual and and if we, we cannot manufacture those things we can only be ready and be faithful and obedient right. which is where it comes every week at church i mean the the whole purpose of the gathering you know the fact is we forget the two biggest purports parts ugh, the entrance and the sending mm -hmm. it's not hey have a great week see you next week no, go to love and serve the Lord. Be who you've been, who you, be the one who you've encountered in flesh, the one who you've encountered uh, today and make a difference. Uh, that, that really is probably for me, the pr a primary connection between worship and mission, because just to do it without a purpose, you just get full up and you, you, there's, it's like the Dead Sea. The Dead Sea's dead because it has no outlet. And we can become dead worshipers if we don't realize there is to be an outlet and we're challenged to be that in mission. Yeah, good. What, what have you experienced, Stephen, in the in in the Middle East with, you, with stuff you've done in Pakistan? That's a, a situation that I've never been in. Uh, Rob, you've done Sri Lanka, but it's not quite the same as what's going on in Pakistan. Uh, in, in terms of what? And, well, in terms of missional a missional approach to worship yeah 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 so you know pakistan is um a 96 percent muslim country yep uh it is legal to be christian there um but it has some pretty tight limitations on what that means uh you're not going to be persecuted for being a christian however uh, you cannot do any street evangelism. Mm -hmm. You can't go into any areas that are specifically Muslim, uh, Islamic areas, uh, and you know share the gospel of Jesus Christ with anybody. As a result, you have about three to four percent, um, and numbers you know are fluid, of course, but about three percent or so of the population that's Christian another two to three percent that are hindu um mm -hmm. and so for worship quest when we go in and do ministry in pakistan uh we are holding conferences worship conferences and we are ministering in churches and in seminaries and it's phenomenal i mean it's there are probably about seventy five thousand christians in the country, mm -hmm. uh, which is, like I said, about 3% of the country. Um, but it's just amazing to see uh, the difficulties that they go through, and yet mm -hmm. the faith and the trust that they have in, in Christ mm -hmm. Jesus. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. We know that a lot of times, those around the world that are persecuted the most, um, sometimes they have a deeper faith <laughs> than those yeah. of us that aren't quite as persecuted. And it's just beautiful to see, you know, that there in Pakistan, especially in the poor areas and the villages. Mm -hmm. um, if you are a Christian, you're really seen as more of a second class citizen uh, mm -hmm. in the country. And mm -hmm. so um, that doesn't mean that you can't get jobs or specific kinds of jobs, but sometimes there is a ceiling put on you. Right, because you identify as yeah, a Christian. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but no, it's it's some really good ministry that we're able to do uh, there in Pakistan. And in fact, uh, we are planning another trip in about six months 
Well, uh, praise God. Go back Excellent. and uh, um, do some teaching uh, at the seminaries and mm. partnering with seminaries to even begin worship programs within nice. the seminary because mm -hmm. that does not currently exist yeah and it hardly so. exists here but it's yeah. growing hey uh just a thought about a practical thing as you were talking uh, i was thinking at a picture of rob in guatemala mm -hmm. uh, when we were down there together and he had spent the days in in this tiny town wazakapan working with local musicians to have them write a song mm -hmm. in spanish uh and I could probably sing it for you now, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, but, but that that practically illustrates what the kinds of things we have done really should be about. And if we're challenging people to go, you have skills that they can mm -hmm. learn. You need mm -hmm. to come to an irreducible minimum. It's not how to learn this song, but how do you play your guitar better? What principles of songwriting can you use, even if you're writing a simple chorus in a, a tribal language? That's what people like uh, Wycliffe and people like uh, Heart Sounds with uh, with OM and uh, others of our friends are doing. So the skills we have are easily transferable because it can't be about us. But why has God gifted us in these areas so we can share those things? It's, it has to do with the theology, but it has to do with the practice of that. How do you keep a team together? I remember uh, some of our conferences in, in Kiev where the, the biggest need really was how do you deal with pastoring your people? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's certainly a problem everywhere, but it was something that they hadn't thought of because they think they thought of music as the servant of everything else. Mm -hmm. And it was just something to, to hold things together. They didn't really think about, oh, you mean I'm responsible for the spiritual growth of my people? Mm -hmm. I'm responsible to be you know, a pastor to them. They haven't thought about that. Right. So if we if those of us who are North American or Western worship leaders, pastors, uh, teachers go, we need to go in that kind of a servant mode to say, everything I have is available to you. How can right. I help? What right. do you need? And if we come along as partners, rather than the great white or whatever color we are, hope, I mean, <laughs> or it's always, unfortunately, yeah. it's usually the white folks who come in with that attitude, if I may be so bold, as a, a, a Caucasian of European descent living in North America. Uh, but we come in as a servant. How can I partner with you? What do you need that I have? How can I serve you? That is better than just being the extra musician to come alongside and be and be a comic relief in the middle of a service, if if yeah. if you will. And that being willing really... to learn from them. Oh, they have yeah, there you exactly. Go. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Right. There you go. Yeah, um, and that's one thing we never do. Right. Uh, Fred, that made me think of two things. Uh, first one was uh, I've been to Pakistan twice. Uh, the first time people would come to me and ask if I was a worshiper. Hmm. And my answer, of course, was yes. You know, I'm a worshiper of the one true almighty God. Yes, absolutely. Well, it wasn't until I went back the second time that I realized, you know, how sometimes we get into our mind um, this idea. And here in North America, we have this idea that music and worship are synonyms, oh, yeah. right? We've, mm -hmm. we've done that mm -hmm. in our own mm -hmm. culture in, in, in North in America. Uh, when someone comes to you after church on Sunday and says, oh, the worship was so good. Inevitably, they're talking about the music. Yeah, right? and that yeah. means you, know? you did my favorite song and I really like the soloist. Right, exactly. That's well, what that means. In Pakistan, what I found out was worshiper was what they were using as the word of someone who sings gospel songs. Oh, really? So if you're okay. in a gospel or a Christian band and you are the singer, you are the worshiper. Oh, dear. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And so they were asking me if I was a vocalist in a Christian band. Yeah. I didn't know that. Oh, interesting. The first okay. time I went. So then the yeah. second time that opened up some teaching to be able to talk about what true worship was mm, yeah. and what mm -hmm. being a worshiper of God was, yeah, right? Yeah, what yeah, what yeah. the word worshiper is. Yeah. Um, the other thing that I thought of is I remember in uh, my friend Roberta King's book on yeah. worship and witness, global worship and witness. She talks about a, a mid 20th century missionary 
who went to the Senefo people, which I believe is West Africa. Okay. And um, the worship in church had gotten to the point to where the preachers would not allow musical worship to happen before the sermon because oh, they were singing Western out American control. songs. No, no, no. Oh, it was no. the opposite. Oh, they got, they the lost the crowd. Asleep. Yeah. It was so uh, boring oh. that people were just so tired <laughs> yeah. by the time they finished singing. And then the preachers were like, I don't want to preach after this. There's no energy in the room. So they would <laughs> preach first and then say, okay, sing your songs after. And this missionary actually, uh, missionary went and saw them around the campfires at night singing their own songs. Yeah. And yeah. dancing with energy, right. and excitement. Right. And his question to them was, can't you sing something in church about what God has done for you? And it gave them permission, essentially, right. to yeah. put worship, musical worship into their own style, contextualization. Mm. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Yeah, and yeah, it yeah, completely yeah. changed worship in that area yeah, yeah, for yeah. the Sinopho people. And it just made me think of that. It's like, what, can't we sing songs about what God has done for us? Well, yeah, no, that yeah. in ways that we understand. And exactly. those of us who are Western have an extra responsibility, hmm. and that is to be permission givers. Hmm. Yeah. Not that they, yeah. not that we have the right to give them permission, but they expect us to say worship is a certain way. Oh yeah. But to say, no, it's like, in, in Ukraine, guys, and I hope we'll pray for Ukraine before we're done. Yeah. Um, in Ukraine, they were always doing bad translations of North American or Australian or British songs mm. five days after they heard it on the internet. And there were seven different translations from seven different churches. And I decided I was going to be annoying. I don't have to decide. I can often be that without deciding. But I said, where's the Ukrainian yourself. song? Yeah. Hey, I'm all in up. <laughs> Where's the Ukrainian song? Oh, this is terrible. You know, can do it. It's not very good. It's awful. These are better songs. I just kept saying they finished this. So where was the Ukrainian song? Oh, where was the, until finally they realized what I was saying, which was they had something to offer that right. and a different perspective to offer than any of us could from the West or even in our given situation. So it's like, we have to give permission to say, we're gonna honor this. We're going to uh, platform this in the best sense of the term. We're gonna yeah. make this a focus and say, this is good. And I think after 10 years of doing it, we help turn that around. And I say, we, meaning the three of us and the others who've been part of the international team that we've been working with for Ukraine. and. Uh, it was just a phenomenal opportunity when asked by Christianity Today to share some Ukrainian worship songs, mm -hmm. to include two that came out of the stuff that we've been doing, some mm -hmm. from our students, kids that we have mm -hmm. taught. And they were great songs, but they came from the Ukrainian heart. Yeah. And and the, the situation there in Ukraine is that they are worship and mission. They have been showing us up in a lot of ways. Not our, not our music oh, students yeah. early, yeah. but they've been about not just sitting where they are, but reaching out and, and being the, the most mission sending country in that part of Europe. I mean, what, to Central Asian republics, oh, right? Because they have the lingua franca, the whole Russian speaking world, of Russian language, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, what yeah, man yeah. meant for evil, God, God's using yeah. for good in terms of yeah. that. And so, th that's a, a tremendous illustration for me of how important it is for us to say, no, you can't sing all those Western songs. Well, you sing some, you can sing eras, nations, generations, style streams, and congregation applied to them as well. Absolutely. That's right. I mean, this is a universal, I think, not that my words are a universal, yeah. but those, that concept <laughs> is, a, well, maybe, no, that the concept is a universal, yeah. that yeah. we need to be tying them into the past, to the present, to the, to other languages, to other styles, et cetera. And that's been a that's been one bright spot in the middle of a horrendous, horrific uh, six mm. months. Yeah, mm. yeah absolutely. Yeah. To see that going on. Well, p piggy piggybacking, Fred, on what you were saying about um, giving permission and encouraging basically indigenous expressions of worship. You know, so my feel is songwriting and like the first missions trips I did, I was part of my role was to go and teach on on songwriting, and. Um, 
yeah, there's a, there's several things you can do just in terms of technical skills, you know, that you can teach people or impart to people and like give them a, you know, a different perspective. Because what you just expressed, uh, you know, kind of a, a, oh, a self-effacing, you know, perspective on our music or our sounds like uh, I've had. And this is not just in Ukrainian, but in several, especially Slavic languages, they would be like, well, our 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 language doesn't sing pretty, you yeah. know, and that's one reason why, you know, like English would be popular or, or some of the European languages, you know, and so we do practical things like break down the cadence of a phrase, yeah. you know, and break it down and find the natural rhythm to that phrase. And then you build a groove and a, and a, and a r melodic rhythm around the cadence of that phrase you know, so in whatever language, so I'd start that as like kind of a building block, you know, yeah. um, and then, you know, then, <laughs> then if you do like the beehive creativity, so if you're doing a songwriting class, right, you get everybody kind of jams different ideas of how to sing that or how to say that and then where to go uh, next in that. And it's all about empowering as well as giving permission, because if you just get permission with no skills, then it's like that's setting, that's setting you up to like, flop right um but if you can but if you can cast a vision you know that hey we want it which your voice is important right i have the saying be a voice not an echo, an echo. right <laughs> right and 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 um and so you know and just do whatever you can if you have the skills to do it to help somebody be a good voice right mm -hmm. and yeah. and and develop a song that's you know that others other people around the world would want to would want to sing mm -hmm. you know so I've got to go find that Guatemalan song you did. Yeah. I remember yeah. the melody like nobody's business. It's just incredible. It's just wonderful. It was an amazing time. Anyway. Dr. Brooks, I had a question for you. Yes. Uh, we, we, well, something I, I wonder about first, you know, if we're privileged to go and serve the Lord in some kind of missions capacity or a teaching capacity, something like that, of course, humility has got to be like, you know, the your main attribute, right? Uh, and being, and I think, I think you said this, being open and desiring to learn from the cultures that you're going to, to serve in. So when you were describing, you know, the situation there in Pakistan, it reminded me of several contexts I have been in where um, it's a reciprocal thing. Like there's a lot, I mean, the hunger, the hunger and the desire for knowledge and help and problem solving, you know, uh at least i sense it's just such a way like actually god can use you you know god can, really can use you to help bring some some light or some insight into you know this particular thing they're trying to deal with whether it's you know crafting a, or developing a, a proper theology of worship or a biblical theology of worship just or identity right. you know or or destiny or 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 musicality even any any of those things so i don't, I don't know if that resonated with you but i was thinking you know i I wondered if you have seen, like I have seen, like the the deep hunger there is, even now, right? That, that always surprises me because I'm like, man, we're, you know, 2022, I'm like, you know, we've got the internet, we've got YouTube, you've got lots of ways to get that knowledge and information, but it still mm -hmm. seems to be a real hunger for like real people, you know, sharing and teaching real things. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. Well, and one of the things that I want people to know wherever they are, is if they are a follower of Christ, you have the spirit of God working within you, yeah. right? It just, just like I do. And, you know, you just lean in on him and he's going to direct you and you're able to minister and serve others. Well, just the way God has made you, you might not have a doctorate in worship. That doesn't mean you can't lead others or teach others about right. worship. Right. Right. Yeah. And so that's one of the things that I try to, to help people with, with, with that understanding, just to, to think that way. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is, you know, when I go to Pakistan, I'm there for two weeks mm -hmm. and then I come yeah. home, yeah. they stay, you know, so I want them to feel like they are equipped to be yeah. able to continue to do ministry. Uh, plus, they know the culture much better than I do. You know, yeah. I, I, I can learn about Pakistani culture or Ukrainian culture, uh, but they are Ukrainian. They are yeah. Pakistani. 
And they'll have an in with other Pakistanis and other Ukrainians that I'll never have. Yeah. Uh, we're seeing it even here in Southern California right now. Uh, because of the war, we, we have a lot of Ukrainian refugees in our county here in, in Orange County. And it's just amazing how those that are Christians that are here, that are Ukrainian refugees, they're connecting really well with the non-Christians who are Ukrainian refugees, yeah, much more than I could, yeah, yeah, because yeah. I'm not Ukrainian and I don't speak their heart language, but they they're able to sit down, they're able to have a conversation, and they're able to essentially grieve together over what's right. happening, you know, in their right, country, yeah. in a, a way that there. I can't. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Of so course. so that's the yeah. other side of it is yeah, I'm gonna go in. To Pakistan for two weeks, but I'm going to leave, and I don't want whatever is going on those first two weeks when I'm there. I don't want that to stop just because I left, yeah, and I yeah, want yeah. that conversation right. to continue beyond. Well, it has to be. It has to be imparting timeless principles. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Biblical principles, and then and then you know just timeless principles of being what it means to be a human being, right? Yeah, <laughs> principles in, not just in a relationship method. with God. <laughs> not a method that do this and do this, and this chord progression will lead people to the throne of God. Exactly. You know, as some people yeah. do. I got to brag on you, Stephen, uh, again, because I've seen you do that. Uh, we've talked a lot about music, and we've kind of played into the, the thing we're trying to not play into, the music equals worship. But I wa I've watched you again, who has a little knowledge of Ukrainian, but teach people in terms of scriptural presentation, mm -hmm. in terms of taking mm -hmm. scripture, make it alive in the reading or presenting of it, other than just somebody with his nose in a book, to take people who'd never done it before, you had an interpreter, but you were t trying to encourage and teach them in the in the inflections and the expression of that language without knowing the language, mm -hmm. but you were there as a servant and you were willing to come alongside and you believed that since they're going to be there after you, they could catch it. And we saw it happen very, very quickly. And you lit a fire that's still burning. Yeah, that's, that's, you didn't pay me to say yeah. that. Uh, and you couldn't because I've seen it and it needs to be acknowledged. And so I just want to encourage everybody to know that if you come along as a learner, when it comes about mission and cross-cultural work, that is probably 50% of the job. If you come along and say, what do you have that I can gain rather than here's what I can give you, then they're going to be open to you, giving what you've got, and you're going to receive far more than you give. I got to say it. And I'm honestly, as two of my friends, I've seen it in both you guys, and it's been marvelous to see. Yeah, thanks. Marvelous. Appreciate that. No worries. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, as we're starting to wrap up. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> Because there's so much more to talk <laughs> about here. Uh, but if I, let, let's take it from two, two perspectives, uh, individual and then the church. So if I'm an individual who loves what I'm hearing right now, you know, about worship and missions and how to connect those two, and um, where do I go from here? Yeah. Well, just, just individually, I, not even thinking of the church necessarily. Yeah. yeah. Well, first, I would say, man, there's there's nothing more fun <laughs> in my view. I, th I think everything about worship is awesome, you know, uh, whether you're whether you're participating locally or you have the honor and privilege of being part of a missions team. Um, you know, we've talked a lot about like basically going in, in terms of like leaders or teachers and that kind of thing, disciplers, you know, but there are a lot of ways like what I would say the average, you know, musician worship dude can do in the context of missions. So, I mean, here's some of the things I have done, okay, on trips. So I've gone on trips where it was a medical mission and my my role was to help lead a little bit of worship, but also like we were doing a dental clinic and we had like hundreds of children in Africa, you know, and it's like, we need some way to occupy them, minister to them, yeah. <laughs> quote, entertain them distract them whatever you know what i mean so i mean there was actually a real there was a there was a role for music in 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 serving that mission you know <laughs> um uh another um another situation so i'm getting ready to go on a trip where it's like it's going to be in spanish and it's like i'm, I'm 
lamentar mi espanol es muy malo. I don't know Spanish, you know, all that great. But I'm going to learn some Spanish songs, you know, and be able to serve in that in that context. So, I mean, those are ways where it's like, you know, you're not you're not the upfront person. It's not about, you know, your music ministry. You're just going to be as an adjunct part, but a uh, but important part, you know, yeah. and and, you know, whatever role God gives you, man, you just, you know, bring Holy Spirit, you know, mm. <laughs> and help, and yeah. help it bring the fuel for that for that particular uh, project. You I know? think there, there's a there's another way to do it that doesn't always involve you going across uh across the ocean but it does mean going cross-culturally it means going across town mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. any major city in america and even minor cities and towns have some kind of international representation mm -hmm. uh you know nobody would ever think that nashville has the largest kurdish population outside of iraq really yeah go figure Wow. And when we when we've done when we were doing ministry in Latin America, Rob and I, we would do we had conferences here in Nashville, Hispanic worship conferences where every country and we counted every country in Latin America was represented. And that's mm -hmm. middle America, mid south Nashville, yeah. Tennessee. Mm -hmm. And so you can serve in those kind of situations, whether it's cross culturally uh, in, in another language. Uh, the other side of the tracks, pardon the statement, but somewhere where you're in a situation that's not your comfort zone. And that may be the best preparation for going overseas. You, nobody, you're still never ready for what it feels like when you're there and you don't know the language and every sign, especially if you go to China or someplace that's Slavic where you've got Cyrillic, you're going, I recognize a backwards R and that's about it. Uh, <laughs> you know, and you don't know what to do with that. So you're out of your comfort zone completely and says so that's a different thing but being able to go across town and to serve uh with a church that's that needs help or to come alongside and train the worship team or come alongside and just just observe and try to learn the language that's the preparation for doing the kinds of things that rob's talking about because then you understand what it means and sometimes you you don't have to go looking very far for that, but you do have to take a step yeah. yep you can't wait for it yeah. to come that's yeah. very good. Yeah, there's God's an, bringing the nations here. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, international students. You got a university nearby. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Those are not just international students. Those are international leaders. Because mm -hmm. they wouldn't be coming here if they didn't have some chops in right. terms of education or some kind of potential role. And so mm -hmm. the chance to minister to those students, even without your music, because guess what? Music does not equal worship. Um, to come alongside them and to understand that and get to know their culture will will prep you, you know, for this yeah. kind of thing. That's a good segue into that next question. So if I'm a leader in a church and I love what I'm hearing, how do I begin to incorporate this into the life of worship within my congregation? Uh, that contextualization idea. And I think that's a, a great one right there, Fred, that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, it People don't have to be musicians, uh, instrumentalists, or vocalists uh, to participate in multicultural worship. Uh, you may have some international students or other people within your congregation who just speak a different language, bring them up and read scripture in yep. various languages yep. i mean that's a very very simple way to incorporate this. low bar and, low bar of entry there yeah, that's that's, that's right. dead easy yeah to do. yeah well also i was going to say just you know catch this kind of a vision then just take baby steps mm. you know yeah. and and what you just suggested is, is a, I, I think it's coming alongside step, even but, other churches i mean i remember right. Again, in the stuff we were doing with the Hispanic community, God moved through one situation where very specific word came that this man was a pastor. None of us knew that he was from a family of pastors. All we knew was that he was uh, a uh, a guy who was doing international uh, shipping. Hmm. And but that came from partnering with the local Hispanic community, and God used that to raise him up he's gone home to be with the lord but he's raised up an awareness so that one uh, an awareness of the hispanic community there because we chose to go there so there's a partnering it was a partnering between his church and a couple of congregations here so much so that when the whole city gathered to pray 
he was the one they picked to pray in Spanish. And here's several tens of thousands of people in the local arena uh, because of that. And there was a partnership there. So there's an, other congregations that you can partner with. Maybe it's building relationships, having a picnic, or better yet, having them come and bring their food. Come on. Absolutely. Come on. Or do a, do a night on. of worship together with exactly. you know, other church, other international churches or just people that you know. I'm, I was thinking as well of the things that Frank Fortunato and others have done with Heart Sounds mm -hmm. International, where they've gone to other cultures and used re remote recording equipment to help to teach them how to some principles of songwriting and then recording their songs for them and giving it back to them. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll have to get you the connection, but you can go there and download those songs and begin to hear some of these things. I love playing that for my students because they're yeah. going, because the game we play is, is this worship? Because they think worship sounds like what they hear on the radio. Sure. Yeah. So getting getting acclimated to that, incorporating that into your congregation in some kind of partnership way. Uh, I think a church to church partnership is a brilliant thing to do if you're willing. There's certainly yeah. many opportunities out there. Yeah, sure. Yeah, that's really good. Or you can have Rob come and he'll sing in three or four languages. There you go. <laughs> Slava <That's> Bogu. Right. <laughs> Slava Bogu. Gloria yeah. Dios. <laughs> Ooh, that's two. Got one Lava more. Lava Domna <laughs> Okay, that's three. Got, it. Got the Romanian in there at the end. <laughs> Easton now, John. Oh. <laughs> And I will put that. some of these links in the, the description of our <laughs> video, Heart Sound International, as well as uh, the links to your ministries, of course. Uh, is there anything else that you would like to say? Any encouragement for people? I know we've scattered these through, but anything uh, you'd like to say as we close? I mean, I just say just be be willing to say yes to God, you know? Uh, and be be one that I, I was talking to one yeah. sister once. She's like, God, I don't just don't ask me to go to Africa. That was her. That was her <laughs> prayer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll go anywhere you want except yeah. Africa. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but uh, Africa is a wonderful place. Um, no, I mean that's it. I'm mean, really that's 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 it from my point of view. Just be willing to say yes yeah. and trust God to make it all work out. Absolutely. I think too, even though we've slammed the music side of it a little bit, we need to realize the power of the arts. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the fact that we we have uh what I call if if the internet is the uh, anyway, music I think is the communication superhighway. And unfortunately, Western English language music is the communication superhighway because you're hearing this wherever anybody can get to the internet. So use that as an entry, but don't make that the whole uh, show. That's good. Realize that you can get there with that. And it's not, well, you're just a musician. Well, that's rubbish. It comes from the pit and it smells like smoke. Yeah. In, in case you didn't get my opinion, that's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> And so, what do you really think, man? <laughs> no, no, let me think about it for a second. It's wrong. Um, the, uh, oh, gosh. Honestly, it's like we, we believe that. And so we need, to re we need to realize we have something to give. We do have something to offer. And that if they don't offer it to you, find a way to serve in the midst of it. Because that is a draw. I mean, honestly, I mean, I've said many times thinking about Ukraine as much as my heart is there. I think one of the reasons we've been successful is they look at me and go, how can this old guy know anything about contemporary music? Because they don't have anybody in that culture who knows that. So mm -hmm. that, you know, by God's grace, that's not the only thing, but that is another thing that's helped bridge the gap for somebody who still doesn't know the language completely. Sure. It's if you're willing to serve, God will send somebody who only knows a little bit and a lot of languages to make a major impact by his grace and by his spirit and keep that in mind. So he's going to unlock the door, but you've got to go. Yeah. You got to walk through it. You got to be willing to go. Uh, and you know what? Uh, if they're, uh, I'm going to get in trouble, but I think Rob, you may feel the same way, Stephen, too. If somebody says, hey, I want to come with you on a trip. Okay, raise your money. Let's do this. I'll find something for you to do so you can watch and learn, or we can put you to places that will allow you to do that. Because Definitely. that, again, like I said earlier, I forget that how what God's allowed me to do is really unique. And I get really ticked at people who don't understand it. And then I go, duh. 
well, you've been in 50 countries, duh. You've, you know, you've been in all kinds of high schools around the world, duh. So we want to be able to share that kind of thing. So if you're going, take somebody with you. And if you haven't been, find somebody to go with. Somebody who's maybe a little bit further ahead. You, like you said, you don't have to have a doctorate in this to do it. But if you're just a couple of steps ahead, you, with a loving servant heart, you can make an impact. And especially in this area, because everywhere you go, you're going to hear the, the background of Western, generally English language music. Even the people who don't normally speak English want to get their songs out. So they're going to sing it in English. So that's your entree. Just don't let it be the whole meal. Yeah, good word. Nice. What an honor to be with you, Stephen. Thanks mm -hmm. for inviting yeah. us. Um, I know that we love working together, so this is just another yeah. thing, but hopefully yeah, it's fun. been beneficial. Yeah, well, thanks both of you for being here. Yeah. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks for what you're doing. Stephen, I've, I've, uh, I've, 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 on the missions field, I've been roommates with both of you guys at different times, you know, yeah. and, 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 and I to say it's, a tie. it's a tie. You're both great roommates. I was going to say, are you going to rate us? You know, which one was better? Listen, I, he was violently ill the last time. I was going to say, poor Fred, man. He's, I mean, uh, you know, I, 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 I was sick there at one time. Huh? Twice, somewhere in Latin America, Argentina. Yeah. And also, yeah, in Lviv, it's like, gosh, Rob. Yeah, well, you saved my life. Else. You saved my life in Argentina, yeah. and uh, and <laughs> and then in, and that's then for another we were, podcast. Yeah, it's a that's whole other story. Podcast. You know, there were there were two funny stories that I was going to tell, but I'm like, when we're done. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but no, now everybody podcast. wants to hear them. That's the well, you know, we'll have to make it a bonus recording. The bonus, right. be part B, the outtakes. Yeah. That'll be the director's yeah. cut. Yeah. <laughs> right <laughs> all right well rob will you close us in prayer oh, and yeah. um will you please uh, pray for ukraine and our ukrainian ministry partners yeah yeah Thanks. yeah lord we come before you now thank you for everyone who's been listening to this um podcast and father we just thank you god for your son jesus christ lord who has made a way for every human being to have relationship with you, Lord. We thank you that you have forgiven us of our sins through his life and his death and his resurrection. And Lord, we thank you for your Holy Spirit that leads and guides us right now. Father, I just speak your blessing on, on Stephen and on his uh, ministry. I speak your blessing on Fred and on his ministry. We speak your blessing on all who are listening to this and all who are contemplating or have been sparked Lord, to serve you in some context in missions, whether it's local or whether it's international. And Father, I pray that you would just provide clarity of vision and open doors and all the provision that's needed and all the resources that are needed, Father. And Lord, uh, we lift up um, the body of Christ that is under persecution all over the world, Father. We ask that you would just um, make them Bold witnesses, Lord, for the love of God. Make them fearless as were the first believers in the first early church. Mm -hmm. And God, we especially lift up our friends in Ukraine, Lord, undergoing this terrible oppression, this terrible, violent, destructive war that's going on and being perpetrated against them. And God, we ask that you would arise and show yourself great. And God, yes. that you would bring forth your justice, God, and your mercy as only you can do. And Lord, we pray and we look forward to a day when there's a time where there's not only an end to the violence, but Lord, there's a new birthing and there's a, a rebuilding God and there is a healing God. And Lord, we ask for your healing river to flow through their God. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so, Father, we just say, God, kingdom of God come and will of God be done on earth as it is in heaven. Yes. And Lord, we ask these things in the name of God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I mean, amen. Mm -hmm.